What's going on beautiful people? I'm MD, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be making one of the most challenging tanks I've probably ever done. Uh, that sounds very dramatic, I realize now, uh, but you'll understand in a minute. So one of my like favorite tanks to make is a no filter aquarium, or I also call them ecosystem aquariums. It just sounds a bit better, I don't know why. And right up here behind me is an example of one of those aquariums, which is working really well. And there we go, look. So there's no filter at all. It's just water and plants. Now the reason this works is because I feed the fish, the fish make the poop, the poop goes into the substrate system that we've got there. Plants use it all, plus the water column. They grow, they create oxygen, and the cycle just goes round and round. Now for this, the, there's my better fish there. Look how nice this boy is. Look at that. It's like a Dalmatian-y, coppery thingy. I don't know. Anyway, now usually when I create these kind of tanks, I always use a lot of stem plants because they grow so fast and they just help everything work really well. I'm not gonna try that in this tank that I'm gonna be doing today. It's gonna be short, slower growing plants. There will be lots of them though, so hopefully it still works. And this right here is the tank that I'm gonna be using. It is 60 centimeters or two, two foot across like a foot high and a foot back, I think. So 60, 30, 30. And the light I'm using is a super fish light. It comes as part of a kit with a filter, the lot, but uh, I don't really like the filter. You know what I'm like? <laughs> Pretty decent hang on the back filter, but you know, not for me. I've painted the background white and put a load of paint on the base as well. That's not on the glass. Doesn't matter, we're not gonna see that very shortly. Now we've got like ultra clear glass, which is really cool. I love ultra clear glass. I use it pretty much all my tanks. And the lighting is actually six. Oh, I've got some tape there from previously. Let me just peel that off. I might need to get some more on there in a minute. Basically, I use the tape to make sure the light's not too bright. Um, one of the setups I had before, didn't need a huge amount of light. This one probably won't either actually. So yeah, that's like, <laughs> Really simple, right? Light tank. I mean, that's why I really, really love to do it. I will be having something in to push the water around because I noticed in the other tank, some of the plants are suffering a little because there isn't any water movement. So I'm gonna put a surface skimmer in here, which has got no media basically in it. So it's not gonna be doing any actual biological filtration. That'll all be done in the substrate, which we're putting in now. So what we've got here is like a mixture of gravel and sand. There's probably a little bit of aqua soil in there as well. But I always use this as a base layer. It's really good for sort of beneficial bacteria to colonize, but also it's cheap because it's just pea gravel mainly. And uh, you can get that like at a garden center or somewhere like that. And then just pile it up in the back. And we can put our aqua soil on top of it. And that way we can save a little bit of aqua soil. We don't need a full sort of, you know, tank full. Just a good cap in on top would be enough. Yeah, here we go. Look, just pile it in. Back section first. I want to create a good angle in this one, so banked right up at the back there. Now I am placing quite a lot in here, but I just want a really good base to be able to put the rocks on, and that means we can start shaping them and getting their angles right, you know, on this layer, and then we can put the aqua soil all around it. Now I have in the past used uh, sort of mesh bags to put all of the substrate system in, then just capped it over sand. It's not that kind of scape really, um, and it's only a small tank, so I'm not too worried about soils mixing and things like that. But the axle on top, it will stay on top as well, because this the stones make their way to the bottom, soil always sits on top. There we go, look, a really good pile in there. Now what I like to do is just sort of pat everything down so it's kind of firmly in place, and then when I put the stones on, it shouldn't all sort of shift about too much. And on top of this goes the aqua soil. Thing is, if I put the stones in now, all of the soil is just gonna sort of push into the open areas. So I need to put the soil on to stop that happening, sort of lock everything in place. And now the aqua soil on top, I'm using the uh, Tropica stuff. We need a good amount. I'm gonna use all of this bag. Well, there's about three quarters of it left. It'd help if I put some up there, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm just gonna use my hand to bring some of this in the foreground up the top. There's quite a lot there. You want to bat an inch because you want to be able to plant into it, don't you? So you do need enough to plant into. Probably going to need more soil than this, to be honest, because by the time I've got the rocks in, I'm going to need to put some more around the top of them. But look at that angle we've got going on there. That is a good angle. Yeah, there we go. I'm flat with it there. So coming right up over halfway, going to put some rocks in as well. It's going to raise it even more, um, but I need to, I will need to adjust where it all sits. Hmm, but what rocks to use? Well, contrasting to the green is Sirius stone. I've got a good amount here with some really interesting shapes. So I should be able to construct something pretty cool in terms of an Iwagumi, we call it, with uh, you know about five rocks, three rocks, tend to have odd numbers. But with those kind of rock only scapes, this stuff is just the best. Everyone can get it as well. It's like available everywhere for the, one of the best prices probably. So I'm gonna go with that. I nearly knocked all of that off then. <laughs> Oh, 
We've got some rock selections there. We don't we don't necessarily have to use every single piece, but uh, some good sizes. Look at that. So I want big impact. I want high angles. Um, you know, the rocks should look like they're about to fall over, basically. <laughs> and as always, to get started, we just get started. Now, just biggest rock in first. Look at that. That could work. A bit more angle. Oh, see what I mean? How, I, how I've put that base layer down means that I can just place that in however I wanted and it stays like it. Smash. <laughs> there we go, look. So I'm almost at the peak of the hill. Um, I want a bit more at the top, you see, so that's why I've, I might overlay it again in this angle and bring them all sort of out. I'm not going to follow any specific lines because sometimes in, with an irigumi like this, it can look a bit odd. Um, one coming this way, just play around with it, basically. <laughs> So all the rocks are in and I'm not happy with the final placements. To me, it looks a bit sort of square on the front. This needs more impact. So once you've got them in like this, now you can start adjusting from this sort of area. It's very hard to get it right first time, isn't it? So just keep fiddling around until you're happy with your results. I think I've settled on something there. It looks a little bit funky now, but once the planting's in, it should, it should, it should work together quite nicely. So we've got that big focus at the top. We've got more of a hill. We're gonna have taller plants at the top there coming to shorter plants all in the foreground. So that's what I mean, that whole section where that gap is, is gonna be plants and in and amongst here and here. Yeah, it should look good. I need to rearrange the soil though, cause look, we've got all different levels. Um, some bits at the, there need a bit more, it needs a bit more on the top as well. So I need to transport that to the back cause it's all tried to come forward as we put all the stones in. I've also noticed that annoyingly, I didn't thoroughly clean the tank at the bottom section here. So I'll just get a razor in there and clean that as well. Otherwise that's gonna annoy me a lot later on. <laughs> There we go, perfect little start there. Now it's time for the planting. Believe it or not, we're at the planting stage already. That's gone quick. Now remember what I said, this tank here, look, we've used a lot of stem plants in the back and there's some of those deficiencies I was talking about, look, you see that? And I think that's because of the lack of flow. It can't be anything else. The lighting's good, there's great nutrients. So in the foreground, we've got some hair grass and that's the only real sort of short plant there is. Everything else grows taller, including the stuff you can see here that I've turned into a carpet. This is pearlweed, but it's just been sort of trimmed short, so it looks like it's a carpet implant, which it is kind of, but you have to keep right on top of it. Now, what plants are we gonna use for the new tank? Da -da -da. <laughs> we have got loads and loads here. We've got uh, Halanthium tenelum green. We've got uh, hair grass. We've got Glossostigma. We've also got UG, which is pronounced some other way. Utricularia gramnifolia, I think. Anyway, I'm not sure if that's gonna work in this tank. I've kind of got these three pots as an experiment to see if I can use them in future, but it's a gorgeous looking plant. And we've also got some more out here in my outdoor storage area. We've got Liliopsis brasiliensis. We've got Cryptocrony parva, which is a small crypt. Tall hair grass at the back there. That's what we're gonna use in that top corner. And S repens, that'll look good around the rocks. So we've got a lot of plants down here. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna need all of them, but I am gonna use a lot. And that's because I'm doing this whole no filter thing. You need a lot of plants to start with. And considering they're all tiny, we need to cover all of the soil. Like no soil should be remaining. Well, it should be there, but not see it. <laughs> now preparing plants is pretty simple. Peel the top off, lift it out of the liquid. See that liquid there? And you're left with like this shape. I always find it's better to tear the outside like that. And then you've got this sort of inner part, keep that little bit separate. And then you've got like sections you can tear off. I roll them up between my fingers and then you've got a plug. Take off any of the loose bits. Looks better that way.
Okay, that took a little bit of time, but it's always worth putting the time in. Now there's three pots of hair grass and, no, what was it? Four pots of hair grass there, three pots of Glossostigma. They don't look too different here, but they will when in the tank and with water. I'm gonna plant them all sort of randomly. The two mixed together look so good. And the reason I know this is because I've done it before. So here is a mountain scape I've created another time and you can see it's Glosso mixed with hair grass. It works so, so well. I'm kind of going for this again, but on a much bigger scale and with no filter. This has got quite a hefty filter that's barely running now, <laughs> but it is running. <laughs> and as I say, I'm just gonna keep plugging all these in at random, stuff will fall down. I find it better to plant when the soil's dry. Some people like it when the soil's wet, but I just find, look at how easy that was. Just gripped it, perfect. Right, there's some of those awesome foreground plants done. They will spread everywhere and intertwine and look great. I've left some areas back there for some Liliopsis brasiliensis and that side as well, trailing down this gap. And we've got the big hair grass that goes all the way to the top. And if I make the surface skimmer spray sort of in this direction, it should swoop back around and make it trail nicely that way. Fingers crossed, it, it might not, um, I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> it should look good either way. Next up is the Liliopsis brasiliensis from Tropica again, such good plants. I mean, look at that, look at that quality. So easy to do, take that off, pull that out, pull that back. <laughs> this is one of the easiest plants to prepare as well. There we go. And with Liliopsis brasiliensis, I like to keep a good clump together. I'd probably only split that in two if I was gonna split it at all. Looking good, right? Some gaps dotted about, but that's deliberate. Next up is S Repens. So yeah, this one here is S Repens, really tall at the moment, so I can actually take some snippets of it, you know, each stem and plant each stem. So over here in this tank, which is very dark at the moment, because look at that lot on the surface. I need to get that duckweed gone, I really, really do. This tank's gonna have a redo soon, so I'm not too worried about it. But look down here, the S Repens, look, stays nice and compact and tight, and that's what we want. Oh, that's filling up, looking sick now. The plants are actually starting to dry out, so I need to spray them down. I don't like to do that too early because you start getting all the soil wet and it starts sticking, but you know, it's been about 20, 30 minutes of planting now and we need to get some water on these plants. It's actually also really good wetting the aquasol through as well, because then when you fill up with water, it doesn't all sort of float up with the water. You get the odd bit you see that just goes around everywhere, dust everywhere. So giving it a good spray down before you fill it is always a good idea. Still got that long hair grass to go in the background, but um, yeah, we'll do that next. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Right, I think, I think that's looking really good. It's hard to tell when it's all flopped over like that. Let's fill up with water and see how it's sitting. I can pull that light a little bit forward now. Highlight the front area a bit more. There we go. Yeah, I think it's gonna look good. Oh yes, look at that. Looking pretty smart, right? But we've got no flow at the moment, have we? We want some flow in there. Remember, this is still technically a no stem plant in my eyes. Even though S. repens is a stem, it grows so slowly and, and won't look anything like that by the time it sort of converts to its underwater status. At the moment, it's got big, wide leaves, big gaps between the nodes of each leaf as well. Um, but it doesn't grow like that when it's in the water. So that's why I'm saying no stem plants for this tank because there's none of those really fast growing stems like Lim the Feel or that kind of thing. It's all just slow growing stuff. Anyway, let's get that flow going. So I'm going to be using this right here, which is the Eheim surface skimmer. Top comes off like that. And then inside, we've got a little bit of foam, like barely anything, look, that's it. So I don't really think we can say that this is a uh, filter, is it? <laughs> that just sits in there. That goes back on the top. Um, this is easy to do when I'm not looking for a camera, of course. There we go, that in there, that in there, in the tank. So I'm going to put the skimmer over this side. Now, some people really hate seeing equipment in their tank. I don't really mind. <laughs> then we can just plug it in and we're working. There we go. Cool, look at the surface. 
and that's what I'm talking about. Look, that's why a surface skimmer is so good in any tank. It's pulling everything in. That surface is going to be like crystal clear in no time. So you can see at the moment there's quite a lot on the surface still, but it just pulls it all back there so fast. Give it two minutes, we're good. And what I find really good as well is if there's any scum at the edge, you just do that, get it into the water, and then the uh, surface skimmer will just clean it up. Right, it's the next day. The tank is looking fantastic. What do you say we go to the fish shop, get the fish for it, and let's fish up. Oh, by the way, new hoodie. You can buy this, click up there somewhere or the link in the description. Get yourself a Let's Fish Up hoodie. Everyone told me I should do it, so I just thought I'd do it and I did and it looks great, I love it, cool. So comfy as well and it's getting colder, so you can either have the hoodie for the cold weather or the t-shirt for the warm weather. <laughs> anyway, enough of that, let's go get the fish. I love that you're calling yourself a YouTuber now, that's good. Oh, I'm still recording. You know Matt, everyone knows Matt. If you don't know Matt, this is Matt. Matt's also a YouTuber, but also he does has a real job as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proper job. So I've shown Matt a picture of the tank. Matt's a fish expert, so he can tell us what we can put in there. I definitely want nano fish. Yep. There's also some nice uh, betters I've seen down here, but no, but it's up to no, you. Not, well, we, yeah, but I didn't know better was an option, but like. Well, betters and uh, nano fish, they just they just work well together, so. Maybe. 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 Unless you're thinking, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so what are we thinking? I, well, I was trying to think of something you haven't done before. Okay. Which is difficult. Um, <laughs> I have that, got through a lot of them yeah, now, haven't I? Yeah, you have, but I'm, I'm now I'm, like, I'm getting a bit worried for the next few months. I'm going to have to start inventing new fish species. I mean, yeah, I'm a bit. The thing is, right, I, I've gone through a lot of the nanos, because that's how I sort of started, yeah. the nano yeah, yeah. fish. Um, it's the bigger stuff I've, I've not really done a huge amount of. Yeah. But, you know, this isn't what I would class as a tank we can put bigger fish in. No. It's a 60 centimetre. Yeah. This is the section for it. I mean, look at that. If you're coming here, these are always stocked up with different nano fish and look so good. So what were you thinking? I quite like the idea, and I think it would look quite good for that tank, is the Vietnamese cardinal minnows. Okay. Yeah, so, that is, well, that, yeah. So they get this really cool sort of navy blue stripe to them, silver stripe above, um, and then they get a slightly red nose to them. So they get this like sort of reddy pink lipstick, <laughs> which are really cool. So they're a really nice fish, um, sort of co tolerant a little bit more of temperature fluctuations and things like that. Um, you can now tell the female, or you're starting to tell the females and males as well. So yeah. that could be quite cool to grab out a few of each. Females are balloons, males yeah. are torpedoes. That's yeah? it. There's I a couple of definite females in there, but there's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of boys in there. So we could definitely pick them out. They're really nice. They're very um, similar to the uh, white cloud, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're very closely related. I think they're the same species, uh, same family. So they're very closely related. The only difference is that they are slightly smaller, um, three, four centimetres fully grown. Okay. Um, and a little bit, well, I say a little bit more colourful, a little bit more silvery with then the brighter colours on them. Whereas the Vietnamese, uh, the normal minnows, they get a bit more sort of, yeah, like a, a light brown sort of colour once they're fully mature. I do, I do love the normal ones and I love yeah. the sort of, uh, you know, those rivery sort of minimal plant look tanks you can get. They work yeah. really well with that. With yeah, some fast yeah. flow, air bubbles coming in, you That's know, like rivery yeah. look. I might do something like that. That'd be really <laughs> nice to be fair. A real nice sort of mountain, mountain river style scape. But I'm thinking, like you say, that the, the little red and the colour pop on these will work yeah. really well against that green and grey, yeah. make them stand out even more. With the style you've gone for as well, that sort of lends itself to that styling with the sort of understated fish. Okay, cool. On their own? It's up to personal preference. Obviously, we've got a few fighters and bits and pieces if you wanted to go for. Um, it's up to, up to a personal choice. We have got some other Tetras and stuff. How many litres is the tank? Nine, a hun, 90 to 100. Oh, nice. 90. Okay. It's a nutscape of 90. Yeah, yeah. So. so, yeah. Um, yeah, there's enough space in there. So, you could go, you know, you've got things like the Kitty Tetras, which are another understated fish. It depends if you like more shoaling fish, but these little guys with the black and white dot to the tail. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, they're a cooler tolerant species, so they can go down into cooler waters. Um, a nice little peaceful shoaler, um, three, four centimetres fully grown. Yeah, so they're another option that are quite nice and, you know, understated again. Really nice when you get up close and personal to them, but, you know, from afar, they just look a bit silvery. Um, I, I like the idea of those, of the uh, Vietnamese yeah. minnows. I think they're a good shout. Yeah? Yeah, I think they'd be nice. What's a good number, you reckon? A that size tank, you could go for quite a few, but I'd probably, you know, uh, probably 12 or so. Like, it depends how, how high stock you want to go. I think that's good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Let's go. You're the expert. 
If we go for too many, it's actually going to spoil the look of the tank, I think. Because this is it's, it. You want that nice shoal just above the rock work and just buzzing about. I think, it, yeah. Yeah. Plus, I need to keep the number pretty low because we're doing fishing cycle, which yeah. is what I always do. I'll explain more to that on for you guys in a minute. But yeah, we'll do. We'll go with the 12 of those. I think that's a good, good shell, and they'll look great in that sort of zen-looking tank, you yeah. know? I think that'll look smart. Bag them up. And we're back at the studio. First job is to turn this light off so we can get the fish in and the temperatures will be matching then. Ah, uh, which one's the light switch? There we go, that was good luck. Slide that back, just place the fish in, and leave them. Woof. Oh yeah, that's a good little group there. It's gonna look lovely. I think we should put some shrimp in as well, to be honest. I've got some shrimp in some of my other tanks and they're gonna help with maintenance and everything like that. There'll be plenty of stuff for them to munch on in the meantime as well, because these plants are gonna have biofilm and there's gonna be detritus and everything growing in there very, very fast for them. So the fish have been temperature acclimating for plenty of time now. Let me put the light back on. Yeah, they're all good. Uh, I'm gonna put the shrimp in now. I've just collected up a little group of shrimp. And here they are, look, a nice little group, about 10 there, 10 or, nine or 10, the males and females mostly females but there's a couple of males there as well so they'll get to work you know straight away keeping everything clean keeping on top and also the main thing breeding producing more now obviously any fish will predate on shrimplets tiny little anything that will fit in their mouth but once this all grows in they should have some good cover and likelihood is that more will survive than will actually get eaten so fingers crossed anyway so the tank that these shrimp are from is the same temperature as this tank. I heat the rooms, you see. That's why there's no heat in this tank because the air temperature is the correct temperature. So we can just put these straight in now. Go on, guys. Go and find, like, a little hiding zone just for the minute. Oh, no, I've made a mess. And look at that look. Straight away, they look really good. They stand out massively. I went for all reds. I've got some other colours as well. But I went for the all red, the, you know, proper cherry shrimp just because I knew they'd stand out great. It might mean there's more chance of them getting eaten, but they won't get eaten as adults. No way, not a chance. Right, we can put the Vietnamese minnows in now. Okay, it's time for us to release the minnows. Hopefully they like their new environment. Yes. Instantly they look good. They look good straight away against this background. A little bit pale in colour, which won't take long to sort of colour up properly. Um, but yeah, they look so good. They're, they're an interesting fish. It's almost like they suit this environment as well. Matt was completely right. Like they're going to colour up a lot more, obviously, but to start with, it's a good start. They're not hiding, they're out in the open. Now, the thing is, we've got livestock in here now, and there's no filter, there's no established bacteria, so we need to add beneficial bacteria. So for this, I'm going to be using API's Quick Start, not a sponsored video or anything, but this is just what I always use. It's like a cheat code to get things started. And I'm going to need a couple of capfuls of this. One, two, and a little bit more for good measure. Now the quick start is a startup beneficial bacteria and what will happen, it will just colonize everything, more will grow, and the right amount will be in the tank then for the fish, which are already getting those nice reds and oranges on them. That has been like literally less than a minute. So good. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be testing the water every day as well to make sure that we're getting those spikes in ammonia, that sort of thing. You can get a slight spike in ammonia from the soil, but it doesn't tend to go to dangerous levels, but you need to be checking. So make sure you've got a test kit. I'm going to be doing that every day. And if needed, any signs of anything negative. So ammonia, nitrite, then I'm just, just doing a 50% water change and back up again. And then I'll add more beneficial bacteria as well. When you do it this way, the toxin levels never get anywhere near high enough to be detrimental to the fish or the shrimp. I mean, the shrimp would be sensitive uh, and they'll be absolutely fine. Look at that one, it's got a saddle on the back. Give me babies. Now the lighting in here, it might be, that it's, it's a little bit brighter it's looking on camera than it is. Hang on, come down a bit. That, that's how it actually looks. It might be a little bit too bright to be honest for startup. Then we might get some algae issues, but that's fine, we've got the shrimp in here. I feel like that's enough light to get the, uh, the hair grass and the gossip stigma carpet in really well. We will get the bloom, but that's fine. We can combat it. We can put some floating plants in the top if we want to. And like I did right at the start, I can put some black electrical tape along some of the LEDs. But to be honest, I think I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. It, the rocks will go green for a little bit. But once it finds balance, I might even add some Amano shrimp at a later date as well. And uh, maybe some snails, neurite snails. Not just yet though, there's not really anything going on. It's enough of just those cherry shrimp. But yeah, later on, we might need to change things up a little bit to account for the highlighting, but that is normal with any tank. Mm -hmm. 